Yes, we're back to basics. My very first video about the Swedish language was a video like this, but that was many years ago and things have changed and words have been added and we're gonna take a look at 10 of them right now. Oi! My name is not Sven, it is Martin, yeah. And the first word is a word we have used in the previous video, but in order to explain word number two, we need to do this first. And the first word is vabba. Vabba is a verb based on the abbreviation VAB, VAB, which stands for Vård av barn, care of child. When your child is sick, you can be home with the child if the child is between 8 months and 12 years old, and you get close to 80% of the salary when you do that. And word number two is vobba. Vobba. And vobba is a combination of the word jobba and vabba to work and to, well, what we just explained. And this is when you're at home with your sick child, but you still work. <sighs> and the next word is olla, which, <laughs> which is the action, the verb to dab the tip of your penis onto various objects. Whenever you meet a Spanish person, they go like, hola. And you're like, that's so nasty. Then we have the word planka, which as a noun means plank, but this is a verb. It means that you make yourself thin like a plank and you slide in behind someone else and you avoid paying. It's basically any way of jumping into a place without paying. You planka. The next word is panta, and panta is a verb that you do when you recycle. You recycle anything that has the word pant on them. You either get money back from it, or you can choose to push the button and donate it to a good cause. The next word is duktig, and duktig is an adjective that you say to someone that is good at something. I mean, it does have a positive tone, but it actually has kind of a demeaning matter. Oh, you're so duktig at speaking Swedish, and then you're like, uh. It's also something that you tell children when they manage to do something like, I don't know, stand up for the first time. Oh, you're so duktig, you're so duktig, you're so duktig. And the kid's like, and then we have the word badkuka, and badkuka literally means bath urn. And it's something you tell someone when they are too afraid to go into the water because, well, it's too cold. You're a badkuka. Then we have sulkat, which literally translates to sun cat, but the functional translation is that glimmer of sunshine from a wristwatch or a phone. If you listen to the Swedish version of ABBA's Slipping Through My Fingers, the song is called Kan man ha en sulkat i en bu? Can you have a sun cat in a cage? Then we have Mambo. And previously we've talked about Sambo. And Sambo is kind of like a roommate, someone you live with but you're not married to, often with a romantic touch. A Mambo is a grown-up living at home with his mother. Hopefully no romantic touches there. And the last word is vaska, and vask is the Swedish word for sink, but vaska is a verb. It means, for example, that you buy two bottles of champagne to your table, and then you ask one of the bottles to be poured into the sink just to show how rich you are. Classic rich kids behavior. And there you go, those were 10 plus Swedish words that cannot be directly translated in its functional meaning to English. What do you think? Do you have examples in your language of words like these? Do any of these words that I said mean something else in your language or do you actually have the same kind of word but it doesn't translate back to English? And where are you from? And what is your day like? Tell me everything, make use of the comment section. It is your chance to make a statement, your chance to be heard. And it's fun to read. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you, or literally you will see me the next time you click on one of my videos.